Thank you for joining me today. Before we get started, I want to take a minute to tell you about a new app called Get Upside that we at the Rideshare Guy have been using to save up to 25 cents per gallon on gas. Pretty awesome. The app is completely free to use. All you have to do is upload your receipt after you buy gas and then cash gets added to your account. The cash adds up over time and you can deposit your funds straight to your PayPal account whenever you want. Some drivers are using GetUpside to save $50 per week just buying gas from their favorite gas stations. So now listen closely because this deal gets even better. I'm going to give you a short code that'll get you an additional $0.15 cents per gallon sign-up bonus. So you just download the GetUpside app from the App Store, open the app, and enter the promo code. It's WQ8JR. Now, another way you can get your $0.15 cent per gallon sign-up bonus is to visit the rideshareguide.com forward slash GetUpside app. That's G-E-T and then Upside, U-P-S-I-D-E, and then app, A-P-P. Check it out. All right, let's start the show. Welcome to the Rideshare Dojo. If you're an Uber or Lyft driver or anyone in the gig economy, this is the place for you. With tips and techniques, interviews with passengers and industry leaders, entertainment, inspiration, motivation. Here, with over 23,000 rides, is your host, Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Hey, everybody. Uber drivers, Lyft drivers, Instacart drivers, Postmates, Ease, Zoom drivers, DoorDash, Via, Amazon Prime, Amazon Prime Now, Uber Eats, Grubhub, all you drivers and passengers and all of us who are part of this big, beautiful gig economy, welcome. It is so great to have you here for today's exciting episode. My name is Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Hey, everybody. It is Jay. Happy day. Happy day to you. I am sitting here at my desk on December 27th, listening to a little Miles Davis live at the Plugged Nickel. Song called Stella by Starlight. Ugh, can't get any better than Miles Davis. All right. This is an episode of Jay Reads the News. Jay Reads the News. So there's a lot of things happening in the news. So I picked out seven stories, uh, some serious, some fairly serious, and some not so serious. But uh, we mix it up a little bit. So in no particular order, let's jump right in. And this will get you all caught up on things that are happening in the ride share industry, which uh, keep you informed. Article number one from The Motley Fool. These are guys who are investment experts. Are Lyft and Uber flirting with illegal price fixing? Question mark. I say, hell yes, they are. Of course they are. The subtitle is Lyft CEO Logan Green acknowledged that rideshare companies take cues from each other. So this is uh, interesting because, of course, price fixing is illegal. But if you've been a driver for the last couple of years, have you noticed that Uber will drop the rate that they pay the driver? And then a month or two later, Lyft will drop the rate to almost the exact same level. That's happened in my market in San Francisco. Uh, Uber makes a drop, a drop of, of my pay and then Lyft goes to the exact same, exact same uh, pay, pay structure, right? The bonuses are a little different, but in terms of the per mile and the per minute vert are identical. And uh, we see this. We see this also with the what the passengers pay. I can pull up, if I need a ride, I can pull up Uber and I can pull up Lyft and they are within a dollar of each other for a trip to the airport. So are Uber and Lyft flirting with illegal price fixing? So uh, Lyft CEO Logan Green, uh, he said, there are there's also been sort of a general rationality of the market. So we took a little bit of risk for the first time and led the market in two small modest price increases over the last couple of quarters. 
I think that's been very healthy for the market. We've seen that matched by the competition, a.k.a. Uber. On the other side, we sort of attempted to do the same thing in terms of couponing and lead in creating a more rational market. We've not seen that matched. So we're going to change our stance. We'll sort of revert to a match and follow position. Match and follow. See, that's price fixing. That's illegal. So I think in terms of some of the future sales and marketing leverage, it's really dependent now on what the competition does, right? So they're just they're just lo looking towards each other to uh, if uh, one does something that's advantageous to the company to the uh, company, then the other one will do it. But I think broadly speaking, there's no reason we shouldn't see the sort of continued march to rationality in the market. So I don't know that that's really big news. Um, Uber and Lyft are notorious for flirting with all kinds of illegal stuff, um, namely treating drivers as independent contractors when we uh, are clearly not. We're treated as employees. But all right, so that's story number one. Are Lyft and Uber flirting with illegal price fixing the motley fool? Okay, this is an interesting article, and it's got... Um, it has got uh, an interesting title. 20 sketchy things about Lyft everyone just ignores. And frankly, you could say this about Uber too because they're basically the same exact uh, company. The, the subplot is uh, promoting sketchy practices such as driver circling. Lyft is raising eyebrows. It's time to peel back the pink mustache to uncover the details. So let's look at these 20 things and see what you and I think. Uh, Lyft encourages driver circling. So what that means is when you don't have a passenger in your car and you want to get a ride, you're going to go to an area where you're more likely to get a pickup, and then you're going to drive around. Well, that's exactly correct. Um, but taxis have been doing that also, right? Taxis will go to a downtown area and circle. So I don't really see that that is a groundbreaking uh, discovery. Um, the other thing drivers can do is is uh, just park. And a lot of times I do that just to save on the gas. And I'll look at my phone and check my Facebook or check my emails as well. 19, uh, they, which is Lyft, also push drivers to stay on the road. So yes, this is true, right? But drivers more than Lyft or Uber push ourselves to stay on the road. So the system is very gamified, right? Um, they give us bonuses to do large number of rides, which encourages us to stay on the road to, to hit our number, right? Um, again, this is no different than what taxis do um, or what Uber does, right? It's all gamified. The longer we're driving, the more money we're going to make on the road. It's the same as any industry really though, right? The more you work, the more money you make, right? If you're a plumber and you can work 12 hours in a day and you get paid by the hour, you're gonna do it, right? Because uh, you're going to want to make, make as much money as you can. Make hay while the sun, shine. sun shines. Okay, number 18. Lift hurts mass transit. True. True. This is true. More people are taking Uber and Lyft than mass transit. Because in America, mass transit is not considered a premium way to, trans to be transported. It's considered dirty. It's considered poor. It's considered unsafe. It's considered dangerous. So Lyft and Uber have hurt mass transit. And uh, in one of these episodes, I made a prediction that because of that, mass transit is going to have to improve, which, uh, which would be a welcome uh, benefit to society. And we can have systems like they have in other countries, like in Malaysia or like in, in Europe, with beautiful trains, with Wi-Fi that, that travel people quickly and they're clean and safe. Okay, number 17, rideshare adds to roadway fatalities. Well, I don't know if there's any any um, data to support this. Um, the author is suggesting that because drivers are a little more tired, um, they're going to be more likely to have accidents. I don't know if that's true. Um, I've driven a lot, and um, I've been involved in just uh, one accident where I uh, rear-ended somebody just the slightest bit in the rain. Um, and that's in four years. So I don't know. I don't know. That's, that's, a, that's a theory. Number 16, the company encourages drivers to pick up happy riders. 
So I've never been encouraged in four in four years and twenty six thousand rides. I've never been encouraged to pick up happy riders. I don't even know what that means. So that just seems like bullshit. I've never never heard of that. So this uh, author said, when I explored Lyft's driver guidebook, I was appalled to find that they make very specific recommendations to drivers, so they receive high ratings and good tips. One of those suggestions, pick up drivers who are happy. They suggest times and demographics that are best, which is complete garbage. Shouldn't everyone get a ride? Everybody does get a ride. I don't, I don't know any drivers. I've never heard the term happy riders before, so I don't really understand that. If you, only, if you only pick up people during certain times of the day, you're not going to make much money and you're going to be a part-time driver. So, um, and I, I, I don't know how you can even find happy drivers, happy passengers, I mean. Um, so that doesn't make any sense. 15, Lyft, Lyft tries building a good citizen image without following through. So, um, so Lyft definitely... Uh, has been considered the gentler, softer, softer of the two companies between Uber and Lyft. And I would agree with the author. They don't follow through on that. Number 14, the driver app actually pushes drowsy drivers. Well, this is the same point they made before in that the uh, apps are gamified and we have bonuses that we can get for a lar- you know, large number of, of trips. And that definitely pushes us to drive. Um, I... I think when someone gets drowsy, they need to pull over. I don't know that a lot of people push themselves to the point of being drought, literally drowsy when they're driving, but um, I'm sure it does happen. 13, there are little punishments in place for dangerous drivers. There are little punishments in place for dangerous drivers. So I don't know what, how you determine someone is a dangerous driver. Um, certainly, I know people that have had, uh, I've had, I know drivers that have had complaints uh, lodged against them um, and they have been deactivated for driving unsafe. I know that anytime a passenger complains about me driving, which has happened twice, um, that I get an immediate email. And of course I reply, you know, this is complete BS. I, you know, I was accused of, once I was accused of dropping a woman off in the middle of the, of the, of the street, which I did not. She was just angry because she had to walk a half a block. And, um, and one woman, one passenger said, I uh, ran a red light. And I said, that passenger doesn't understand that when the light is yellow, you can enter the, enter the uh, crosswalk and, and, and still go all the way across. So, but I get those, those emails come quickly and they sound very threatening. So I don't know what the, uh, what they're referring to there. Number 12, drivers are encouraged not to pick up drunk drivers. Um, this side, I again don't know that that's true. I've never been encouraged to not pick up drunk drivers. I certainly will pick up people who are inebriated. Uh, if somebody's really drunk to the point that I think they're going to vomit in my car, I will not pick them up. That's happened twice in my, in my four-year career where somebody was staggering so badly to my car that they actually literally fell to the ground. I, I drove away. That is not my job to take somebody that inebriated. That person needs to go back where they came from, sober up a bit, and then and then get into a car. Lift pockets well over 25% of their total revenue. Yeah, that's that's the deal. That's that's how much they get. I don't think that's such a bad thing. Number 10, there's no accountability for going off the route. Uh, so um that's true, but a lot of times going off the route gets gets the passenger where they're going faster, and uh, and if I go off the route, I let the passenger know. Um, so the the driver definitely needs the the passenger needs to keep track of when a, when somebody's going off 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 the route and ask questions if that's happening. But that seems very rare. Um, the company avoids legal action by branding themselves as a contracting firm. Well, of course, this is the, uh, are we an employee or are we an independent contractor question? Um, this also allows Lyft to avoid wage regulation and employee laws. Boom, shakalaka. That is so true. And this is one of the main reasons I support AB5 and I support uh, drivers being treated as employees is because Uber and Lyft are just skirting the law and they're avoiding 
uh, wage regulations and employment laws, and they're not paying taxes to the state, which uh, then turns into better roads, better schools, uh, better, better public services for all of us. Number seven, the company doesn't disclose trip data. I'm fine with that. Um, they also don't disclose hours drivers spent on shift. So this is an interesting thing. How, how uh, it wouldn't be difficult for, because uh, uh, that's one of the questions we always get asked, right? What, t- what time did you start your shift, right? Because people want to find out. Like I drive at five in the morning. That's when I start. People always ask me, have you been driving all night or are you just starting your shift? Because they don't want somebody who's been driving all night. Or if I, if somebody was driving all night, they're going to be a little more sensitive and a little more careful because that person might be just, you know, really tired. Um, so they don't disclose hours, hours drivers spent on shift. Is that their job? I don't know. Uh, the driver determines uh, his business is to determine, you know, if he's up for the driving, if it's going to be a safe environment. And it's up to the passenger to determine that the driver is, you know, going to be responsible. Um, I personally would not want the hours uh, that I've spent on a shift to be displayed because sometimes I do a 12 or a 14 hour shift and I'm still very alert and I know how to manage my, my day. So I am very alert and I wouldn't want to be prejudiced because of that. So I don't agree with that. Lyft doesn't take responsibility in any driver caused accidents. That's true. They also treat drivers like slaves. (laughs) Well, that's true too. Uh, We are treated like employees. We don't have any rights. And, um, you know, what can you do? That is the way that it is. Um, All you can do is uh, take legal action against them uh, if that's something you choose to pursue. Um, Ride shares don't even prevent drunk driving. So they're saying that the percentage of of, or the number of car accidents caused by drunk driving has not decreased, uh, meaning that even though we do dr- take a lot of drunk drivers, uh, drunk passengers home, uh, that there are still a large number of people that choose to, to drink and drive. So um, I don't know that that's true. I'd like to see some statistics on that. Uh, doesn't make sense to me, though. I would think that because more people can just get an Uber rather than drink, that the, the, that the total number of drunk driving deaths, for example, would have come down. But this article does not provide um, any uh, data. Number two, Lyft does little after riders complain. So I've heard this, and I, I don't know that that's true. I, I, I do know that um, I've heard this. So Lyft and Uber, they do little after riders complain. Uh, I, I, I know, I know dr- uh, drivers that have been deactivated after some complaints. So I don't know what, this, uh, what the author is wanting uh, for, for Lyft to do when a rider complains. There's two sides to every story. And just because a rider complains doesn't mean the, the, the rider is correct. The passenger is correct. Uh, as, I, as I've already said, I've had several, uh, well, two, Uh, Safety complaints, which were totally uh, false, Um, but, but, you know, things get misinterpreted and people make mistakes. And finally, the company doesn't protect writers, period. Uh, Well, I don't, you know, I don't think that's true. They've got the, uh, the company does protect writers. There's a button people can push if they feel threatened. They can always ask to be let out of the car. Um, uh, Is that true? Does Lyft uh, doesn't pr- doesn't protect riders? Period. Um, there are assaults that happened. Uber, of course, came out with a safety report. We find out that about half the time the assault is the passenger uh, assaulting the the driver. So it goes both ways. Um, I think Lyft does protect the riders uh, somewhat. Uh, apparently, this author would like uh, there to be more protections, and she doesn't even mention the. Uh, the danger that the driver uh, could possibly uh, face. She's only focused on the the passenger. So that's a really interesting article. Um, If you want to find that, that's in uh, thethings.com. Sketchy things about Lyft, everyone just ignores. Next article, article number three. 
Uber may pull off the impossible in 2020. So this uh, author, uh, this is from Forbes, suggests that Uber may become profitable in 2020, although there isn't a lot of reason why, just some kind of optimism that they're going to uh, uh, figure it out by raising some rates uh, that they charge and some of their acquisitions um, uh, paying off. So, meanwhile, Uber has only one real rival left in America, Lyft. For the first time ever, Lyft started raising prices across the board last month. So that means now Uber and Lyft are both kind of free and clear to start raising the rates together. As we shared, that's already uh, happening. Uh, that's uh, actually illegal price fixing. But um, I, I, I definitely have predicted that the rates are going to go up. So I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think Uber will become profitable this year, but perhaps uh, in 2021. Okay. This is a uh, really good article. Uber and Lyft drivers, this is from CNET. Uber and Lyft drivers could become employees with this new law. 10 things to know. All right. So this is all about AB5, right? AB5. Come January, a land landmark law is set to go into effect and possibly turn ride hail drivers into employees. This could upend the gig economy as we know it. And there's a picture here with big yellow... Uh, uh, like posters that say pay workers a living wage, deactivate Uber billionaires, gig workers rising. All right. So what are these 10 things? So what is AB5? Number one. So if you don't know what AB5 is, you've been living under a rock. But basically AB5 says that uh, you have to pass these three tests in order to be considered an independent contractor, right? So the three tests are questions. So ask yourself, drivers, can you answer these questions? Are you free from the company's control? So do you feel free from Uber and Lyft's control? Clearly you do not. B, do you do work that's not key to the company's business? Well, obviously we're, we're a transportation company, we're the drivers. So that's, that's false. And do we maintain our own independent business in the same industry? So that's obviously not the case either. Um, so if all three of those standards aren't passed, then employee, employers must classify their workers as employees. So uh, we definitely don't pass A and B. Uh, do we maintain our own independent business in the same industry? Well, that kind of we do in that we're independent contractors and we're in the industry and we do have two clients, basically. We have Uber and Lyft. But in terms of are we free from the company's control? No. Uh, do we do work that's not key to the company's business? No. So we pass. So we don't pass that. So that's why, um, as of January 1st in California, we are now going to be classified as employees. When does AB5 go into effect? January 1st. Does this law extend outside of California? Not yet, but other, other states are looking to implement it. Do Uber and Lyft drivers want to be employees? So some drivers want to be reclassified, others don't. Um, our own rideshare guy uh, a blog, we discovered that 66% of drivers surveyed want to stay classified as contractors, likely to maintain their flexibility. Only 16% said they wanted to become employees. See, now, I think this is just b drivers being misinformed, right? I did a great interview with a woman who's part of Gig Risers Working, and uh, she really laid it out for us. Uh, if we become employees, we make about 30% more. Um, and this idea that Uber and Lyft are, are throwing in the driver's faces that they're going to lose all their flexibility is complete bullshit. It's just what they're saying. It's not what's actually going to happen. So when you say you want to, you're opposed to uh, become, being classified as an employee, you're basically saying you want 30% less money. That's what you're saying. And that's all you're saying. Uh, number five, will drivers actually lose flexible schedules if they become employees? Not necessarily, right? So that's that's the truth of it. What's the benefit of being an employee? This is really great. They get minimum wage, workers' compensation, unemployment insurance, paid sick and vacation leave, overtime, health insurance, and more. I can't I can't understand why any driver would not want all those things and still be able to drive when you want to drive and uh, earn when you want to earn. That's the best of both worlds. 
What are Uber and Lyft's stance on AB5? Adamantly opposed to it. Okay. And then number eight, wait, a, bail, a, ba- a ballot proposal. So they're putting all this money into a proposal called Protect App Based Drivers and Service Act, along with Instacart and Postmates. They've all put in millions of dollars uh, to create an alternative to AB5. But when you look at what the alternative does, it, it, goes, it has drivers going from $15.60 per hour uh, on average to $5.64 per hour. So it's just Lyft, Uber, and all of them basically trying to pull the wool over your eyes, saying they're out for your, your best interest, and then screwing you. So don't fall for it. Do not fall for it. You got to ask yourself over the last four years since I've been driving and however long you've been driving, has Uber and Lyft ever done anything, made any move which has actually benefited you as a driver? What I've seen is the bonuses have come down. I've seen referral bonuses go away. I've seen rates come down. I've seen per minute, per mile uh, uh, adjusted in a way that brought my pay down 10%. No, they, they've never done anything that has truly benefited me as a driver right? Uh, So that's that article. Good article from CNET called Uber and Lyft drivers could become employees with this law. 10 things to know. Get educated before you say you're opposed to AB5. All right. Lyft driver wants to clear his name after writers smell this warning post. So this is uh, Fox 2 Detroit. So apparently a driver uh, was with a passenger, and she was like sniffling or sneezing or something. And he pulled out some essential oil, some peppermint essential oil. And he and he like reached back and said, here, smell this. And the passenger had a total meltdown and put it on social media and made this guy seem like he was like a complete perv. And all he was trying to do was uh, help her out. So... It's, uh, it's remarkable how people react and how things can become mi- so misinterpreted. And if I were the driver, I certainly would not have done that. But I certainly can understand his intention, which was to help somebody. Uh, just unfortunate. Okay, next one. Bye Bye Travis. So this is uh, an article that's called Former Uber CEO Kalanick. Severs ties with ride-hailing giant. So Travis Kalanick has stepped off the board of directors. Uh, this makes his his uh, his uh, severance from from Uber pretty complete. He still owns a shitload of stock and money in, uh, in Uber. He sold quite a bit of it recently, but um, he is no longer on the board of directors. So that's kind of a you know that's a a, a new wave of energy now that that he's off. And uh, that whole dark period uh, with all the, 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 the corporate shenanigans and the misogyny and the, the uh, kind of dark uh, corporate culture uh, is gone. So I think that's a, that's a, that's a good move uh, for Uber as they go into the new year. And our final story, Jay Reads the News. Uber made it cheaper to take a helicopter than a car to the airport. So this is pretty great. If I were in New York, I would uh, I would seriously consider taking a taking a helicopter. It sounds really fun. It's only like one hundred and twenty five dollars. So they show a Twitter account, and the woman says, "Why the fuck is the Uber helicopter the cheapest option?" And it shows her going from uh, Manhattan to JFK in an Uber X for one hundred and twenty six dollars and eighty four cents, and apparently. Taking the helicopter is uh, like a dollar or two cheaper than that. So uh, we don't have any helicopters in San Francisco, but uh, it would sure be fun to be in New York and take a helicopter from downtown to the airport. Um, it's not like it picks you up at the door. You have to go to a certain certain building and and uh, schedule your time, uh, much like you schedule your you know your your airplane uh, airplane ride, but. Wouldn't that be pretty cool just to to do kind of a Donald Trump sort of, you know, fly over the city? So that was an interesting story. All right. So you're all caught up on the news. Jay reads the news. Hope you enjoyed that. 
We got to cover quite a bit about uh, Uber's uh, Uber and Lyft uh, price fixing. We talked a lot about uh, Lyft and how uh, one one author uh, perceived them as being a little bit sketchy. Uh, will Uber or Lyft become profitable? Uh, how AB5 will affect you as a driver? Uh, do not offer somebody in your car the opportunity to smell something. And if you're in New York, you can uh, go and take a helicopter ride. It's about the same price as taking an Uber. All right. All right, that's a wrap. Fist bump uh, to all of you drivers out there. You all rock, at, rock it every single day. I honor you. Thank you for sharing your journey with me. Be safe out there. This is Nomad Jay saying this episode is in the can. If you're thinking about starting an online business, definitely check out my website at nomadj.com, where you can get my free ebook called What's Next? How to Do Online Work You Love from Anywhere in the World. That is nomadjay.com. I also do a daily one minute per day podcast called Nomad Daily, in which I share different aspects of life. Uh, Nomad Daily with Jay Creator is available wherever you get your podcasts. People are really liking it. Check it out. You just uh, subscribe, and then every day you're just going to, it's going to automatically load up. And you're going to get the next episode and you just listen for a minute to a minute and a half and boom, you're done. And uh, it's great. I really enjoy doing that. All right. Next episode, more news, interviews, all things Rideshare Dojo for drivers and all of us in the gig economy. I will do my best to bring you the best here in the dojo. This is Jay Crater saying thanks for entering the dojo every Monday and Thursday. Drive happy and be safe out there. Loved this episode of the Rideshare Dojo podcast? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. It really helps, and it's very much appreciated. Be sure to visit RideshareDojo.com to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our fantastic bonus content. Thanks for listening, and be safe out there.